Okay, so we'll continue with our uh, history lesson, uh, page number 124 in Nigel Kelly. Okay, so we had discussed about the credentials of uh, Muhammad Ali Bogra, uh, that it was he uh, who was responsible for the aid which Pakistan got in uh, the shape of a million tons of wheat. Okay, number one, uh, which uh, you know the famine that was threatening Pakistan uh, that was avoided, and then he the, set up the planning board. Okay. Uh, and that planning board produced a five-year plan, so that was under Muhammad Ali Bogra, and then which avoided, of course, further uh, food shortages in Pakistan also, and then Cento, okay, because of the uh, the benefit that Pakistan got because of Cento was uh, that you know we got aid in terms of money and army supplies, and uh, we got industrial experts as Pakistan was to make its industrial economy at that time. Then it was in the process of setting up its industries. Now moving on. The heading is uh, 1954 to 1955 constitutional crisis, uh, and it's page number 124. Okay, so now uh, Malik Ghulam Muhammad wanted to be in power. He was the heart and soul of Pakistan. He was doing whatever he wanted to. Um, maybe because of the vast powers that the Governor General had, uh, according to the 1935 Government of India Act, which was still being followed, he wanted to uh, maintain that power. He wanted to maintain that position. And he want, uh, actually wanted uh, Muhammad Ali Bogra to be a puppet prime minister. But uh, uh, Khaja Nazimuddin, of course, was a, uh, he had his, his standing, he had a political standing. So uh, he dismissed Khaja Nazimuddin because Khaja Nazimuddin could stand up to him. And he called Muhammad Ali Bogra so that Muhammad Ali Bogra would prove to be a puppet prime minister for him. But he was wrong. So this, uh, and because of all this, you know, there was no constitutional progress as such in Pakistan. So while um, Ulam Muhammad was out of the country, uh, just look at this page number 124, very last paragraph. On September 21st, 1954, uh, while Ulam Muhammad was out of the country, Bogra persuaded the assembly, the constituent assembly, uh, to pass the laws limiting the powers of the governor general. Because uh, he was doing whatever he wanted to under those powers. So how did he got the powers reduced? It can come for a four mark question also. That all his ministers, including the prime minister, must be members of the assembly. So that, you know, if Malik Ulam Muhammad want people who are not part of the assembly, Malik Ulam Muhammad cannot make them a minister. Okay, because at that time he had the power that he can pick up anyone from the road and make him even the prime minister. But then Muhammad Ali Bogra, through the, uh, you know, uh, through this, Muhammad Ali Bogra was trying to limit the powers of the governor general that he cannot, uh, you know, appoint anyone uh, as the uh, minister, including the prime minister. They have to be members of the constituent assembly. That the mem that the assembly had to approve the cabinet. Okay, once the ministers are you know there, they have to be approved by the assembly and not the head of the state. They need the uh, uh, approval of the assembly because assembly uh, is the one who's making laws. They are the ones who get elected. So we discussed this yesterday. Okay, what is an assembly? So uh, assembly had to approve the cabinet. Once the prime minister is there, when the ministers are there, they need the approval of the assembly. Okay, not the head of the state. That the governor general had to take the advice of his ministers. And the governor general, whatever he wants to do, he cannot act independently on his own. He needs to follow the advice of his ministers, Okay, his cabinet. So this was reducing the powers of the governor general to a greater extent. Okay, And Malik Ola Muhammad was out of the country. And um, this was an attempt to weaken the power of the governor general. And in just 15 minutes, the Prada Act, just 15 minutes, the Prada Act that was uh, there was repealed in just 15 minutes, okay, because it was being misused. We had discussed Prada in Yaqut Ali Khan's, um, you know, chapter, so which was actually made to eliminate corruption, but was actually encouraging uh, corruption. So Prada was repealed in just 15 minutes. So um, the Constituent Assembly, Muhammad Ali Bogra got it done when the Malik Ulama was out of the country. But Malik Ulama Muhammad was not a man who could take such opposition very lightly. So when Muhammad Ali Bogra was out of the country, what? how did Malik Ulam Muhammad react to this? Malik Ulam Muhammad reacted by dissolving this constituent assembly, dismissing them, okay, dissolving them. Dis uh, he dismissed the entire constituent assembly which had reduced his powers, who had reduced its powers. So he got the entire assembly, you know, dismissed. Um, and um, he proclaimed emergency in the country. Now, emergency is another political science term. Emergency means that you suspend the government. Okay, for example, I give you an example that your mom and dad are like the governor general and the prime minister in your house. 
so say for example that mom is not able to control the situation in the house the servants are not listening to her and the children are not listening to her so your dad takes control of the house and he proclaims emergency and he tell, tells your mom that i am putting up emergency in the house so you can just relax for some time and you know i will put the order in i will put the house in order so that's what you call proclaiming emergency in political time, uh, science terms this is what uh, when a president or a governor general or a governor in a province proclaims emergency they directly come into the uh, you know they directly start running the affairs of the government while the government gets suspended for some time and uh, that is emergency so malik ul ahmad dissolved the assembly malik ul ahmad proclaimed emergency in the country because of what happened with the, the assembly which tried to reduce his powers he reacted in three ways he uh, dis dissolved the constituent assembly he uh, proclaimed emergency in the country and then lastly he um uh, jo hai he the dismissed mohammad ali bogra okay since my breakfast is here i'm getting confused so please bear with that so um the third is that he dismissed mohammad ali bogra as a prime minister okay and then he reappointed mohammad ali bogra after doing this he reappointed mohammad ali bogra as the prime minister okay but he included three uh, fives or let me just uh, reconfirm okay he appointed yes five members he appointed five non assembly members as ministers including general ayub khan the commander in chief of the pakistan army he was given the ministry of defense and iskandar mirza so you know this is a trio malik ul ahmad iskandar mirza ayub khan this is a trio uh, who's uh, making all these conspiracies who's running all these conspiracies okay and pakistan is a destabilized country because of all these conspiracies so uh, he reappointed mohammad ali bogra and along with him he appointed five uh, along with other other ministers he appointed five non assembly members which even included ayub khan which even included uh, which even included ayub khan and it even included um, iskandar mirza okay so uh, this is how he reacted so now what happened uh, then uh, the speaker of the dissolved assembly maulvi tamizuddin okay he was a uh, this uh, speaker of this dissolved constituent assembly he challenged malik ul ahmad muhammad's uh, uh, you know authority that malik ul ahmad muhammad had no right to dismiss this assembly he challenged this that how can malik ul ahmad muhammad dissolve this assembly he challenged this act in sindh high court and sindh high court ruled in favor of malik ul uh, of uh, maulvi tamizuddin sindh high court uh, sindh high court ruled in favor of maulvi tamizuddin that malik ul ahmad muhammad had no right to dissolve the assembly but you know when you get uh, a judgment from a lower court you can appeal in the higher court so this was done from the sindh high court Wha and then malik ul ahmad went and appealed against this in the supreme court which is a higher court so when you get a judgment against you in the say high court you can appeal in the supreme court you can appeal in the higher court so this is how the law works so he appealed in the supreme court against the decision of the sindh high court which was not in his favor and the supreme court using a law of necessity jisko hum urdu mein kehte hain nazariya e zarurat using the law of necessity which is one of the darkest law ever made in pakistan uh, you know it gave justifications to a lot of wrong acts i'll explain it to you what the uh, i'll explain it to you what this uh, law is it's very funny you know so nazariya e zarurat or the law of necessity using the doctrine of necessity um, justice munir who was actually the uh, supreme uh, who was actually the chief justice at that time he ruled in favor of malik ulam muhammad by using the doctrine of necessity which is one of the darkest uh, you know judgments given by the supreme court of pakistan because it then validated a lot of wrong acts uh, in the future law of necessity now what is the law of necessity law of necessity simply means that it's a law that so for example i always give this example in my class that i am not allowed to hit a student okay physically we are not allowed in any good school you know physical uh, abuse is not allowed by the teachers uh it it is not allowed for the teachers to hit the students physically you know they say maar na ek to hota na haath laga diya wo nahi but like hitting actually hitting like they hit in government schools and in the madrasas that is not allowed so i am not allowed to do that but say i did hit a child okay i did hit a child and um using this law of necessity my illegal act can be verified verified what do i have to just say uh the judgment what does the judgment have to say that you know it's just that if i felt necessary if as a teacher i felt necessary that i need to hit a child i don't need to even define it 
I don't need to define that why did I felt it was necessary to hit that child. Was he hitting me back? Was he hitting another student? Did he had a gun? Did he had a weapon with which he was uh, trying to shoot me or any other one or anyone else? So even if not only I hit a child, I can actually, you know, kill a child. <laughs> Allah forbid. Yes, so, you know, uh, this is so funny that just by saying that I felt it was necessary, although I did not have the right to do it. But if I felt that it was necessary being the uh, teacher at that time, being the person in authority at that time, if I felt it was necessary, so my law is validated, my act is validated, even if not only I hit a child, even killed a child. This is so funny. This is called Nazariya Zaruwat. This is the law of necessity. That Malik Ulam Muhammad had no right to dissolve the assembly, but yet since he was the governor general, if he felt, now the words are, if he felt it was necessary. If he felt, I think it's written in a book also. Yes. Uh, the higher court ruled that Ghulam Muhammad had the authority to dismiss the assembly if he was satisfied that the situation demanded it. Yes, the situation demanded it. Okay. So I hit a child. I may kill a child, although by the law of the book of the school, I'm not allowed to hit a child, uh, uh, physically, you know, torture a child. But yes, if the situation demanded, if I felt it was necessary, being in the authority at that time, so I did it. So my law is, uh, my act is validated through the doctrine of necessity, Nazari has ruled. This was, you know, the, uh, the judgment of the highest court of Pakistan in favor of uh, Malik Ghulam Muhammad and his uh, act was validated. So this is how, you know, Malik Ghulam Muhammad escaped um, and his wrong act was justified by the Supreme Court of Pakistan, which is indeed one of the darkest uh, uh, judgment ever given by the Supreme Court of Pakistan. And then finally, you know, Malik Ghulam Muhammad, uh, he was forced by Skandar Mirza because I told you this is a trio. Malik Ghulam Muhammad, Skandar Mirza and Ayub Khan. So, uh, Skandar Mirza, who was Mir Jafar's grandson, who betrayed Raju Dola, if you remember the Battle of Plassey, EIC. And uh, uh, so he betrayed uh, Malik Ulam Muhammad and he forced him to resign uh, because Malik Ulam Muhammad didn't want to leave power, although he was a paralyzed man, but yet he didn't want to leave power, you know. And Skandar Mirza tricked him, and uh, of course, I'm doing a public uh, lecture, so I can't uh, tell you how he got him resigned. Uh, maybe in a class I can tell you. So um, he tricked uh, uh, this uh, Ulam Muhammad, Skandar Mirza tricked Malik Ulam Muhammad into resigning. And then we heard that Malik Ulam Muhammad has fallen ill and uh, you know he has resigned. And Skandar Mirza then became the next Governor General of Pakistan. Skandar Mirza is the last Governor General of Pakistan. Um, Qaid -e Azam, Khawja Nazimuddin, Malik Ulam Muhammad and the fourth and the last Governor General of Pakistan is Skandar Mirza. And uh, the first President of Pakistan. So we'll start Skandar Mirza tomorrow. Uh, for the history class today, this ends your Malik Ulam Muhammad, lecture number three. I'll upload lecture number one first and then I'll move to Skandar Mirza.